Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans reacts today We're keeping along the two themes that have been going on lately with last week's reacts of caves and this week's podcast episode Talking about India. We're gonna put the two together and go back to a cave in India Now what's so special about said cave in India? Well, uh, this cave, uh, which is located near the Kalashi village of the uh, Konkan region of Maharashtra, or Maharashtra, I should say, uh, has an exorbitant amount of, uh, of just artifacts and uh, my personal favorite, uh, petroglyphs. Uh, I, do, I do love the, uh, the carved rock. Uh, they are... There's, there's a lot. I, I can't even find the number here. Uh, so I, I'm showing the example of the petroglyphs on the screen, which is towards the bottom of the article. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. What The thing that makes this cave so special is the fact that researchers were looking at petroglyphs and other carvings when they stumbled across this cave. And within this cave, they found tons and tons of stone tools from projectile points to scraper tools to uh tons of flakes and micro debitage and even the stone carvings that span potentially between ten thousand and forty eight thousand years ago caves were always used as a point of um habitation a point to rest to uh, fix your tools so the fact that finding tools is here isn't uncommon but that is an incredible span of time. Now, I know... So, so some of these tools are microliths, which are, like, sm uh, small stone tools. Um, I, know in, I know in Europe that's a staple of European Mesolithic. Um, I'm not too familiar with India, but, like, considering that um, the, da the, uh, the artifacts dating between 10,000 and 48,000 years ago, I mean, that's a, that's a wide variety that's a wide range for like different stone tools to come into use and out of use for new and for new styles to come in. Yeah. Now the interesting thing here that they talk about is in this region of India, there's over 1700 petroglyphs at 132 locations in 76 villages in this region. And yeah. the carvings indicate um, a specific civilization um, he says the main researcher talks about the seals of the Harappan culture one of the oldest civilizations they're finding seals that depict similar things with animals in the relationship to the petroglyphs mm -hmm. but it's just it's really interesting that they're finding this and I'm curious to see what other research they're going to do in this area because I'm sure that there's other artifacts and then they also talked about doing a uh, residue analysis on the on the tools to see what they were used for. Yeah, and uh, with the petro with the petroglyphs and a lot of their content, uh, it is the uh, traditional uh, uh, petroglyph depictions. It is large game and large predators, as well as human beings hunting those predators. is a is the primary theme of a lot of these. So it is a. Uh, it seems to be a relatively universal, uh, uh, what's the word, theme? Yeah, across the world, the, you know, it doesn't for, matter where for, you are. Yeah, for a lot of this, you know, cave and rock art uh, is, is, is nature and hunting nature. <laughs> um, apparently, eight of these petroglyphs, or at least eight of the sites, are on the UNESCO's tentative list for World Heritage Sites, so... Within the coming years, you might see one of these be nominated for as a UNESCO heritage site, which is great because it leads to preservation mm -hmm. and uh, and funding. also yeah potential funding and also tourism, which would add to the funding. Yeah, so yeah. this is huge. It's an incredible discovery, and again, this is one that's coming out a little ahead of time. Like, they obviously have had time to do the research and to catalog the artifacts. But they haven't even begun a lot of the scientific processes that follow the field work. Yeah. And they say and that two rounds of excavations have been done in the site. 
Yeah, honestly, and, honestly I wouldn't be surprised if this is like just a repeated hab habitated site. Oh, just for over thousands over of the years. yeah over the yeah over the millennia that it's just a repeated habitation site. Again, I don't know too much about the area, but if you see this wide range of artifacts, uh, you you can imagine this has just been inhabited repeatedly during Forever. each period. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the nice things too with them be with these artifacts being on the you know permits pending list for UNESCO World Protect Heritage and all that protection is just i personally don't want to see a repeat of uh of the cave in france i believe it's a uh chavet cave where they've had to shut down the actual cave and ban all people from entry simply because of the tourism that arose around it just eroding the ancient and beautiful art and i you know i think giving these protections in er in early in before there can be any tourism is uh is something that is very important to avoid a repeat of that uh near disaster well and you hit on a really important topic there of a lot of times people think preservation in place is good enough like to set up a tourist site but there are impacts to the sites there are degradations machu picchu is experiencing the same thing where a lot of the brickwork a lot of the stone uh, walkways are eroding quicker than they should have because of this increase in traffic even beyond that the need and want to build facilities around these sites also impact them yeah yeah and so just you know the the good of having all those you know world heritage regulations and protections and funding in early is is, is something i like to see especially given just how old we're talking here i mean we're talking up to forty-eight thousand years ago that if they've en endured that long they deserve to outlive us wanting to have a looky-loo <laughs> literally yeah and i i think also we're not even underlying the fact that to have this unesco protection is a very massive step and that should really indicate the scale of how important this site is going to be and that they're recognizing it at this point so early on that they could take one look at this and go this is significant mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah, and it's significant enough to be considered a touchstone of humanity because that's that's what the unesco world heritage list is is the things without which we really aren't the human race anymore no they're all a lot of them are just significant sites throughout our collective human history that yeah. if we've lost we lose we just lose a part of ourselves that we can never get back i also just want to highlight for the people playing at home that may not understand the scale and severity of this 40,000 years, if they are Homo sapiens sapiens, at 40,000 years ago in the Indian subcontinent, that is, what, 150,000 years after we left Africa. So, it, it, a little bit of time, because we left about 200,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah, about, because we've only, we've only been around as a species for a quarter of a million years. Yeah, so that makes about... A little more. <laughs> we were still interacting with neanderthals at this time the woolly mammoths still roamed the earth hell we were before even the last ice age the mm -hmm. earth was more temperate of a climate things were a little more tropical like there were so many things that had changed and had adapted since that time yeah and if you wonder why everything is too freaking cold now it's the ice age <laughs> No, we're out of the ice age. Yeah. We've been out of the ice age for like. Yeah, we've been out of the ice. I'm just saying everything was a little more temperate. <laughs> yeah, now we've wound up in places where it's too cold for us because everything was just a little too nice. We had everything was fine until we decided to ruin everything, or decided to guess a whole place and. We're not. We're not. That's the other video. Yeah. Be that's sure to check other, out our the, podcast from that's Monday. That's the Bopo, That's our uh, Bopo podcast, uh, episode twenty-one of Historical Humans. Uh, Be sure to watch it. it. Shameless yeah. plug. 
Yep. All right. It also I, takes place in India. <laughs> on that tragic uh, gassing <laughs> bombshell, um, let's let's wrap up. I think that we are at a good point here. We highlighted the importance, the uh, efficiency. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like. If there's a topic you would like to see us cover, be sure to comment down below. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss ne next week's video or any of our future other videos. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.